Alrighty, <clears throat> Mr. Gatekeeper here. Another late night. About three, three ish in the morning on this end. Trying to knock these things off back to back. This one wasn't too, too bad. We got about three, three or four hours in this one. Not bad. Uh, Mr. Dwayne, we got your silver streak all uh, ready to go, brother. This thing was in a lot rougher uh, shape than I uh, attended in the beginning. Um, I was thinking that it was just going to be a keying circuit. Um, this is uh, what came in at factory. Which is a 20, uh, 2907 APNP general purpose uh, transistor. And uh, I went ahead and replaced it with a 4125. Which you can see right here. Okay, and uh, what the problem was initially is when you turn the amp on, the relay was engaged. So basically, yeah, the amplifier was, was working, but uh, you couldn't go in the receive mode because that relay was engaged. <clears throat> so that let me know then that it was a key and circuit issue uh, off the rip there. So uh, first thing I'd done was replace this uh, key and, uh, this key and transistor with a uh, 4125. It's a little bit higher dollar. Um, transistor that I like to use for my preamp circuits as well and at that point um, it did fix the issue halfway the relay was keying but it was not holding um, so basically when I keyed it was kind of chattering a little bit and when I would audio it was kind of you know it just wasn't holding well enough and uh, the sideband was not keying at all so at, at that point, I replaced the, well, I can't really can't tell you what it is because um, it's basically the, uh, the capacitor that gets the signal from your incoming RF because when I was taking that out, the, uh, the capacitor literally just shattered. So I don't know what value that was and uh, the problem was still there. So what I did at this point the um as you see right here this 103 cap it's definitely seen its better days that right there is just uh making sure there's no dc signals coming into your amplifier your rf basically just flows through series through through this cap you don't see a lot of homebrew type builders like me using these because I mean just really ain't no need for them it's just something extra extra there man it's just if you ask me it is kind of part of a good craftsmanship but uh I will add them sometimes on my AB bias builds but uh what I went ahead and done is just to be safe I just went ahead and just replaced your whole key and circuit um went ahead and replaced this right here with a, with a, with a uh, 3 kilovolt 103 I replaced, uh, there was a 103 here. I went ahead and upgraded that to a 104. I've done that with some of the other silver streaks. I'm just had key and circuit problems. And uh, to be safe, I went ahead and took the diode out and replaced it with a 4148 um, glass diode there. And I went ahead and uh, changed out the resistor as well. Um, I really do not believe that this was supposed to be in here. I really do not believe that. It's usually going to be a 470 or a 330. This key and circuit is real, real common. You see a lot of them, like Palomar, Texas Star, a lot of them. It's a PNP type key and circuit. And uh, so I went ahead and replaced that with a 470, as you see here. All right, so that uh, fixed the issue, my friend. So uh, you got lucky there. I know you mentioned something about some lights. Um, but all the LEDs seem to be working just fine, so. As you can see. So, uh, not 
not too sure what you meant by that. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, the back SO239 is a little loose, and uh, I'm just going to put a little epoxy on there. I like to do that. be honest with you, a lot of my new builds, man, just for some reason, a lot of these SO239s, I just have bad luck with the, uh, you know, I put low heat to them, but sometimes they still, the, the, uh, the actual insulator just comes a little loose, you know, and I know on down the road that could cause a problem, so I always just reinforce that with some uh good strong epoxy there man and never have a problem with it after that at all it just reinforces i'm a reinforcement type of guy the only other thing i see here that i would do that i think i'm going to do for you uh there's no ferrite at all on the uh, dc input here to power in the amplifier i'll probably just go ahead and just throw you on a little snap snap on ferrite right there i think i got a few laying around just you know just as precaution I usually always uh, like to have some sort of a choke on the input there. So let's go ahead and uh, get these nasty components out of the way here. Get them ready for the trash can and let you see this thing working. All right, what's we're going to be putting into it? I got to rush on through this. It's time for it hit the sack out here, man. Do all right, 22 watts PP. Yeah, 13.6. Let's turn that cap. Y'all know how OCD I am on this end, man. Some of y'all boys be like, man, that cotton picker, man, ain't no been no difference of 13.6 and 13.8. Yeah, you're right, but it's gonna be a difference in my mind. <laughs> there we go. Right, it's a difference in my mind. That's all that counts. All right, I'm gonna flip this on. Okay, we got it on low. Here's what we're looking at. Oh, I about 166 watts. And by the way, man, this thing is engaging very nice now. Very nice. Alrighty, let's go ahead and flip it on high. Got about a 70 watt dead key. Look at that man, 270 PP coming out of this bad boy. <laughs> Uh, these little bitty things are stout, man. I tell you what, man. And this one right here is a very stout one that I know. It's pretty, pretty quick off the rip there, man. Oh, thing is busting 300 watts, man. That is amazing. Very amazing. All right, let's go ahead and bust this thing up to about 15.2 volts. Yeah, she actually isn't going to increase that much, but uh, there's a little increase there. Oh, about 330 watts, 340 watts. That is amazing, man. Oh, that is a very high output amp there, man. I don't blame you for not wanting to get rid of it. All right, brother. Uh, go ahead and let you know, too, man. As you see on the back, it says these things are designed for four watts input. I couldn't leave that out, man. I went ahead and done a little something else for you. <laughs> That thing wasn't doing uh, that much power when it when it got here, man. I was gonna save the best for the last. What I went ahead and did, man, is um, most of these silver streaks when you put them on high on the amperage meter, they will actually swing backwards. That's letting you know you're just being overdriven, and uh, that's because they're pretty much designed for four watts on high. You put more than that, it's going to be overdriven and your uh, transistor is going to be saturated. All right, this is on high. Let me let you see the amperage. Oh, yeah. All right, you see the amperage is, is going forward just a little bit there. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm 
almost forgot. Let me let you see the input reflect. 10 watt slug. Oh, beautiful tune. Oh, oh, Alrighty. We bumped the voltage back down a little bit there. I was going to key it up and talk on it for just a quick second, man. I would just like to key on them, talk on them for a little bit before I package them back up. Just make sure everything's going to be good. And I don't know I'm going to like to run them on 15 volts. I just do that to let y'all see what they're going to do. You know, That's pretty much what that's all about. <laughs> but uh, what I went ahead and did for you is um, there was a 120 peak affair on the input here. And there's, and, there was a, and there's 100 on the output. I went ahead and trimmed that in, and uh, basically what I did is I actually backed it down just a little to the point so when you do put that much into it, it's not going to be overdriven, and I replaced these Allen Bradleys here with just a little bit more, just a little bit more. I think there was, um, see, that that's really neat how, that, how they got this. Uh, I have never seen another amplifier do this. Basically, this is only a three wrap, okay? Or is it a two wrap? I think it's okay. It's only a two wrap. It's a two to three ratio. But as you see, there's four wraps right there. That's because they've actually got two sets of wires wrapped around here. So when you put it on high, it just flows on through, wraps around, and boom. When you put it on low, it goes through the uh right here goes through this resistor down in series and then goes through the next wire and i've never seen anybody do it that way and you see both of them ground at the same place right there there's a lot easier way to do that but i'm not going to get into all that but uh but basically i just put you a little bit more ohms there uh that uh 222s i believe Yeah, I believe so. One two twenty two equals about forty uh forty four ohms or whatever, and uh, there was only about about half that that was there already. So uh, I had these actually laying around for it from a uh, I can't remember what amplifier it was, but I actually had took them out and redid the uh, high low medium circuits. So shoot, man, I know I'd be able to put them to use uh, one day. So there you go, man. She's back up in operation. Just let you see the uh, side man switch there. So you got a slight delay on AM. And she'll work just fine for you on a uh, side band. All right, y'all. Sorry, a little slur in my words and everything. I'm ready to hit the sack, man. I got the sweet thing in there waiting on me. Mr. Gatekeeper. Stayed up about, I don't know, about two hours more than what. Uh, I was supposed to, so I'm probably going to get me a little spanking when I get up in there. <laughs> I'm just kidding with y'all. You're going to be able to get this back for uh, deer season, buddy, like I promised you. Here's your little nice little uh, Silver Streak 150. I think it's about the third or fourth one I've done. Nice little amps, man. I'd like to have me one... Uh, mint condition one day I, I usually only try to collect amps that are in perfect mint i'm talking about nothing missing from the letters you know that's the way i am this one right here is in great condition as you see this speckle right here that's just from the paint where somebody painted it so this one is actually in very nice condition this is uh one i probably would own i just hit that with some acetone to get that off and very nice man Give you one more shot of key and circuit there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven components total. Eight, nine counting the resistors. There you go, Mr. Gatekeeper said it. God bless everybody. I'm gone, y'all. Good night.